Shout out to Liam Reynolds on Patreon for two months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on my channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be introducing you guys to the plugin Ho-Rope for Cinema 4D. I haven't used this yet for a project, but it's going to be included in a plugins video I have coming out in the future, and I want to do an individual video on each plugin. So I'm going to be introducing you guys to it, uh, showing you some things you can do with it, and then hopefully you guys can get really creative with it and create your own things, and hopefully I show you something new that you didn't know about. This tutorial is not going to be complex, it's going to be pretty basic, going to kind of show you the plugin, and hopefully you guys enjoy and learn something. Uh, if you do, be sure to leave a like on the video. At 100 likes, I will post the Cinema 4D file in the description for you guys to download. Uh, it's available now on my Patreon if you're a $5 tier member. Uh, also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy. Uh, I make a bunch of tutorials, so you might as well subscribe uh, so you don't miss out on future ones. And if you don't enjoy the tutorials, you can always unsubscribe later on. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So you're going to want to go ahead to the link in the description and download this plugin. It's on a GitHub page, so you're going to have to download it, add it to your folders. Uh, if you're not sure, I think they include something with how to install it, but if they don't, I'll include a link that shows you how to install plugins. Once you do that, you want to open up your Cinema 4D. Now I'm in my Lightroom. I'm going to get rid of those two things. I'm going to make my sky visible and I'm going to add a few materials. Now you don't have to use my Lightroom. You don't have to use my materials. I'm just using it to show you guys this plugin. But if you're curious, I'm using a sky material from the bubbles folder in my material V8 pack, the wood multi from my wood folder in the materials V8 pack, and then a material from my V7 pack called Concrete. And that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to add the Concrete to the text, and I'm going to move the text up to the top. I'm going to make it say Ho Rope, and this is just the default um, text in my light, uh, my light Studio. So actually, it's all set up for me. It's the Acmo Display font, uh, ita italicized, and then the cap is 5 centimeters curve. And this is the curve we have. It's pretty neat looking that there's 20 segments on it. I am going to be adding a random effector to the text just so it can stay uh, or keep the rope effect up better. So I'm going to do some light tilting like so. And then on the text, I'm going to go to object and bring the horizontal spacing in. So I was going for an effect where there's like IVs wrapped around the text. That's kind of the look I was going for with Ho Rope. You can use it for a ton of things because it can actually interact with objects. Uh, and it's really cool. I used to use Rebrex all the time, but this is a step up. It's a lot more diverse. So whatever object you want Ho Rope to interact with, you're going to have to go to that object, in my case the text, right click, go to simulation tags and make it a collider body. And then you want to create a spline for it. So I'm going to create a helix and I'm gonna make that helix go from Z to Y. And let me hide these lights real fast so you can see it. Uh, and I'm gonna bring that up so it wraps around my text and starts from the left side. Let's increase the height to about 600-ish. And we wanna to go to the end angle here and we'll say, we'll add times two. So we have like four rings going on now and actually let's spike it up to like there, okay. So about almost 1700, 1650, and that's pretty good. And this is where our ho rope is gonna go around. So let's actually go to start radius and knock this down as well, maybe 120 for the start and end radius. So it's a little thinner. Perfect. Now let's go to extensions, ho rope, and add our helix in. And you can see we get an effect. Um, it's super janky though, because it's these are bones, and there's only 16 bones. We wanna uh, set this to the max, which is 150. I type in 200 and it goes to 150 because um, that is the cap. And then the radius, you can make whatever. I had mine at 2 and 1, I believe. So I'll set this first one to 2. And we want to create sweep and uh, show sweep and bones. And then I'm not using controls, so you can hide controls. Basically, if you have controls, after you make the ho rope editable, you can move around the end joints. I'm not going to be doing that, but you can do that if you'd like. Um, so this is set up. Cool. Um, now, when this falls, I want it to stay on parts of the text. So right now, if it were to fall, I think this part would probably fall off, which is whatever. Hopefully this stays. Hopefully this stays. That might stay, but this one is going to fall off, and I want that to stay on the H. So I'm going to slide this whole thing over to about there and then let's come to the helix and we'll decrease the height. Cool and I'm going to do a quick test so basically uh, when you're done you want to press C on the keyboard on the ho rope 
And then if you press play, you can see you'll get it following and interacting with the text, which is cool. And you're gonna wanna come into the helix and maybe hide it so you can see it a little better. And that looks pretty neat. Let's add some more keyframes to our Cinema 4D. So we'll go to 210, so that's about seven seconds. Um, and we get this drooping rope going on, which I think is pretty cool. This is the effect I was going for, for the most part. But um, let's actually, we're gonna have to press Command Z a few times and get back our um, whole rope plugin so we can keep making changes. Um, I'm actually gonna duplicate this and set the radius to one and go to the helix and the end angle, I'm gonna jack up again to like 2000 something. And maybe we go to height bias and favor one side. Maybe we'll favor the beginning just to mix it up. And let's minimize this. And I'm gonna say this is good just to move on for the tutorial. Um, so when you're done, you're gonna to wanna to select them and press C on the keyboard, making them editable. And I'm gonna add my material, which is this wood multi. And I'm gonna press command and drag it to the other one. Uh, let's hide the helix by pressing the top spot uh, stoplight. Uh, be sure to open up the hoe rope then, and you'll notice the bones null. And if you render, it will be visible because this bottom one's not checked red. So be sure to check that one red, and you should be good. Um, and now we can go to the beginning and press play again. And we get our cool like drooping wires going on. Uh, or For me, they're vines. That's the kind of look I was going for. And we've played this, not much else will happen. These, okay, these are fallen, which is pretty interesting. And obviously you can use these for animation, things like that. Um, but to add some more interest to them, you can actually go to simulate forces and add some of these forces. So um, the one I like the best is turbulence. So if we add that, set it to, we'll do 35 and scale 100. And if we go to zero and press play again, you'll see what these, it becomes a lot more natural looking, a lot more wonky. You get a cooler look. And you could pause this at any point and render it. So like maybe I like it there. Maybe I wanna keep going and let it fully develop. Completely up to you. Um, I, I would use these for stills personally because I do a lot of still work. But if you're using animation and things like that, you might wanna customize it a little bit more. Um, so something you could do is go to simulate forces. Um, you could do uh, wind, which this just creates a fan. So if we wanna do, I like to turn mine up 90 degrees and add a bit of wind, maybe 15, press play. And this won't um, do anything too crazy. It'll just like mix it around, swirl it around a little bit. Um, But you get this like really cool stylized rope kind of thing going on. And now uh, I noticed when I rendered this, it didn't look exactly how I had it. So when I had it, say I had this and I wanted to render this out, this wouldn't be the final one. I got some like wonkier results, which I'll show you on screen now. So you got this one, which was actually drooping all around and I rendered it out and you can see it's above the text. It's kind of all over the place, which I actually thought was pretty cool. And for still purposes, I thought it was pretty neat. And uh, But if you're going for exactly what you want, that'd be kind of annoying. And you can see the same thing kind of happened here. This one's a lot more wonky. And then this third one's even crazier, but I actually really like this third one. Um, but if you really want to avoid that um, and you want it to look how it looks on your render, you're gonna have to come into the sweep, right click, current state to object and then that should work and then it's locked in uh, and it won't change for you. You also might wanna add a subdivision surface to the sweep. Um, you might wanna do that anyway, regardless if you are uh, making it an object or not, cause it will smooth out some of the wonkier edges and things like that. That's it for my tutorial. I know it was a short one and a quick one. I didn't show you too much, but I just wanted to introduce the plugin for you guys that don't know about it. I would like to have a more in-depth tutorial covering this in a full project, but I have to make that project first. And I have some ideas, but I just don't have the time to do it yet. Um, so be sure to be on the lookout for that in the future. But again, if you enjoyed, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.